Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to this week's segment of Live Without Limits. Today's show is titled, How to Fail the Majority of the Time and Still Get Rich. One of the reasons I want to talk about this topic is very simple, that no one ever succeeds Every time they try something, there's always going to be failures. But we need to learn from all those failures so that we can build up to a goal and succeed in the in the end. So, what what are some of the things that you need to do? So, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the course of the, to continue the, that counts, said Winston Churchill. How to fail the majority of the time, still get rich. Have you ever heard that the old quote, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take? This was said by ice hockey great Wayne Gretzky. And is a quote I always keep in mind. It's a simple premise, but one that resonates with me to the core. I recently stumbled across an email I wanted to share, which had a similar idea, although this time it was referencing basketball. But the truth is, both Gretzky's quote and what I'm about to tell you can and absolutely should be applied to your financial success. The email that could change your life. The premise of the email was this. The author researched the top 10 starters for the Eastern and Western All-Star basketball teams to find out how much money they made this year which came to a whopping $224 million. Not bad for 10 players. And you know what? Because they're entertainers, their money will always increase. And the opportunities today with network marketing, with affiliate marketing, are opportunities that can help you reach those limits just as well as anyone else. But the interesting thing was what he discovered about the average field goal percentage. By the way, if you're not into basketball, this is the number of shots taken that fall into the basket versus those that don't make it in. Basically, how often the player is making the shot. So now you've got the 10 guys making tens of millions of dollars a year each. And you're probably thinking that their percentages are somewhat near 100%, right? Or surely around 90 or 80, at the very least, no. Almost the opposite. The author found that those 10 all-star players were an average of 48.8% from the field. Isn't that crazy? That means these 10 superstar athletes aren't even making shots half the time compared to the 100% success rate that 
average Joe needs to achieve in his desk job. Being an NBA ball player sure sounds like a breeze. And here's another thing to think about. Baseball. The top athletes stay with the same team throughout their lifetime. But be, and when they don't, they get traded as often as anything else. And, you know, they have days where they go two out of four or they go one out of three. And their average is usually in the 300 level and not but they don't make all the shots because, you know, it's a matter of who the pitcher is who the player is, how good they are at hitting certain balls, and not only how good they are, but how good they are at hitting a certain pitcher. If you've ever watched baseball and the head coach, he always puts the lineup in there that has the best opportunity against a pitcher. And if you look at a pitcher's stats, Sometimes they're 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, and those may seem low in other areas, but in baseball, they're not very good. You either have to be under one or under two to be a great pitcher, and very few pitchers are that great. There have been some, but not that many. So as you can see, just because you fail certain times, you have success other times. Isn't that crazy? That means that these 10 superstar athletes aren't even making shots half the time. Compared to 100% success rate, the average Joe needs to achieve in his desk job. Being an NBA ball player sure sounds like a breeze. The truth behind an epic success story are all epic success stories. But of course, it's not quite this simple. And when you think about it pretty quickly, you can see why these High-level athletes, just ask any CEO, entrepreneur, or successful individual. Spend their whole lives training to be the best. Not so they can have a perfect score percentage, but so they have the skills and experience to even get to play on that court. See Although these athletes make their jobs look easy, it's anything but. They just put in copious amounts of blood, sweat, and tears behind the scenes to get to that point. The years of training and commitment missing out on parties Staying focused and constantly honing their skills and why they're at the level they're at today. And this drive is priceless. It's the amount of time they spent improving themselves before the big game, which commands their huge paychecks. One of the things that a lot of athletes have, and not just the coaches in the business, but personal coaches that help them work on their mindset, that help them focus and get so focused that they can reach that top level of where they're at in their profession. Now, ask yourself, what are you doing to improve yourself outside of your job beyond the basic requirements that you need to meet and get your paycheck. 
how are you going above and beyond? And you know, there are companies today that are even offering opportunities for you as an affiliate to not only improve your mindset, but build an income referring other people who can use the same products to improve their self-esteem and personal growth. What does this mean to you? The truth is, success isn't a one-hit wonder. It's a slow burn. Seemingly overnight successes are generally people who have been grinding for years before they made it big, even if it seems like it came easy. One thing I want to back up here, if you look, at basketball, if you look at football, if you look at baseball, it's something that they work at from the time they're young children. They have the peewee league. They have the opportunity in high school, in college, to perfect their skills from there. Only the top players from high school go to college, and only the top players in college go on to the pros in any profession. In football, they don't go to the minors first. They do have the opportunity to be on the varsity league, but they also have to prove it because you can either be first string second string, or third string. And what that means in football is if the top player gets hurt, the next player down goes in, and he is expected to fill the shoes of the top player. In baseball, if a first baseman or a second baseman is hurt while he's out, they will bring someone up from the minors to fill that position. And either that person goes down when the player comes back or they will make a spot for him on the major league team if he has proven himself. But one thing the minors does is it helps players perfect their skills. So when the opportunity comes for them to go to the major league, they can make it. You, as an individual in your chosen field, can do the same thing. You can learn to grow, to build those skills, to perfect all of the things that you truly need to expand your opportunities in the workplace. So, how much of the success in the moment comes down to the hours, weeks, months, and years of dedication that have been put in before the first big paycheck. If you look at even anyone that goes to work for the corporation in the past, they often started at the bottom unless their father owned the company They came in at the first level. Once they had proven themselves, then they move into the lower level management positions. And in the past, corporations would offer training to their management level people in leadership, communication, in listening skills, in your career path, but you know what? They don't offer those types of training today. And if you want to follow it, and even as a small businessman, you need to learn those skills. You need to understand how to communicate and how to offer good customer service, because the idea is that you want to bring business to you. 
you want to keep that business coming back every time they need something. Why has network marketing proven that it works? Because not only are the people and the management people who have worked their ways up into those top levels in multi-level marketing making the money, but they are actually getting the training they need, whether it's on their own or however they're going to get it, so that they can keep improving. Plus, they, they have learned how to manage their team to help them build and grow to the success that they want. So much of the success in the moment comes down to the hours, the weeks, the months, and the years of dedication that have put in for the first big paycheck. On top of this, achieving the success you're capable of relies on a thirst for growth and the motivation to constantly better yourself. And the rest is gravy. As these big Shot ball players show you don't have to be perfect to get to where you want to be. In fact, you don't even need to get half of the shots you take in. But you can do and need to take a shot and to be ready for when your moment comes. And you know what? One of the things that you need to be aware of is you need to be willing to fail because you only learn from your failures. And the, and the failures that you have teach you what not to do in the future. The next steps. As I mentioned earlier, the success you're capable of relies on a thirst for growth, the motivation to constantly better yourself. This boils down to two important steps. First, don't quit. You will reach any dream you strive for as long as you don't quit. How badly do you want to achieve your dream? A simple wish won't cut it. You need to have a big enough goal that will motivate you to keep going even during times when you feel like doing a, what you it okay what you need to do is keep going even when you have those down times that you feel like you want to give up secondly you must constantly be learning and growing as a person. The best kind of learning comes from real-life experience. I hope you agree. And when it comes to success, it's no different. Experience is the best teacher. The problem for most people is that experience is full of struggle, frustration, dealing with one step forward and two steps back and so on, so you can either learn from your experience and pray you'll figure it out, or you can learn from someone else who has been where you're at and has found a formula to make millions and millions and millions of dollars. And one of the things I want to talk about is failure, because I think people tend to give up when they fail, or they tend to put brakes on themselves. Why? Because somewhere along the line, they have bought into what someone else has told them, that they can't succeed. You know, if you look back on your childhood, you, a young child is an open slate. They actually believe they can do everything and anything. If someone told a baby, you'll never walk or you'll never run 
or you'll never. How many of them would it? And they and they actually understood it. How many times would they get to the point of first crawling, then standing up, then walking, then running? And once they start running, you have to hold on to them because they take off in a flash. So really and truly, it's understanding how you as an individual can take and go from A to Z and learn each step along the way, everything you need to do to reach your goal. A young child first learns their letters. Then they learn to put letters together to make words. Then they learn to put words together to make sentences. And remember, everything you do is a learning process. If you keep towards your goals and entrepreneurship, the daunting aspect of what it is, to be an entrepreneur. And for so many people, they fear it or they fear the success. They don't even try. So are you going to let your fears be your limiting beliefs? Are you going to let those things stop you from reaching your goals? Here are some things that you can do. You can put together some affirmations, things that you can that you can say that can literally turn your life around and help you as an individual to grow, to believe in yourself, to find out what you need to do. And the best thing you can do is never stop learning. If it means learning more about your niche, learning more about the people you want to reach, what their needs are, what their pain is, where their issues are so that you can address them, then and only then can you go to the next step, which is figuring out how to market to them or where they hang out so that you can kind of question them and do surveys and find out exactly what it is that they need and they want and how you can best serve them. Then when you start working or building your business, one of the best things that you can do is find companies that are in your niche or have been serving your niche, find out what they do and what they have done to be able to reach that particular client and then figure out how you can do it differently to be better. I have a friend that she, she is a chiropractor, and when I met her, she had an office. And she had a partner. And she literally revamped everything that she was doing that rather than having an office and a partner, she decided to work from home. That instead of having her clients come to her, she was going to serve that niche of people who could not get out of the home but still needed a chiropractor. And I remember talking to her, and she said that she was still making the same amount of money as she had been making before when she had the office, but the difference was she didn't have the overhead that she had before. And eventually, as she built up her reputation, she was able to build up her income and her the number of clients that she served. And if you here's another thing to think of, 
think about marijuana as medical service or, or business is growing because every state or slowly every state is changing their their laws to where it is no longer against the law to be smoking grass or marijuana, which is the, the, the other term is it's known as grass because it has found that the ingredients in marijuana have helped with pain that affect people with cancer, that serve people with fibromyalgia, that serve people with certain issues. And the difference is now that you know there are people that need to be served that have these problems and can use medical marijuana, the next step is to look at it this way. How do they get the paraphernalia that they need to be able to smoke marijuana? To be a, you know, you have smoke shops. Well, are they going to be able to get to the smoke shop? What if you delivered, and it may be hand delivery local, or it can be a drop ship delivery. The idea is that you understand how you can research and fill a niche that people need in your business. So let's go back a little bit and sit and say, what does this mean to you? The truth is that success isn't a one-hit wonder. It's a slow burn, seemingly overnight successes are generally people who have been grinding away for years before they made it big, even if it seemed like it came easy. And that's the biggest thing that you need to look at. As I mentioned earlier, the success you're capable of relies on a thirst for growth and the motivation to constantly better yourself, which means you need to constantly find ways to improve your self-esteem, your personal issues, to overcome your limiting beliefs. And that's the biggest thing that I have found is that many a times people are so fearful of failure, of success, or whatever, that they let their fears overcome them. So you can go to my website, and that website is the number one personalcareercoach.com, and you can sign up for coaching. Oh, we have some books and some Ebooks and some papers that you can t- that you can download and you can read that can help you with growing and taking yourself to the next level. <laughs>